Hello and welcome to Man's Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons Garthwaite. And I'm Carla Garrick. And it's cold out. It is. saying it's cold out. I put my I put my little yeah, wind I was like, on. can we have layers? And I mean it, we got really spoiled though because we had two weekends in a row where I think it was two weekends in a row where it was like seventy five degrees, yeah. which was abnormally warm. It, it was, was like Florida warm, seriously. It was special. It was great. Yeah, it was um, fine. Um but here we are, halfway. Well, I mean, it's a week before Thanksgiving. I know, so it's, it's halfway to be through kind November, of cold which, nice. no, you know, November always goes fast for some of us. Um, and this then month. Thanksgiving's next week, which is just crazy also. Um, I was saying before we got on the air that I've been carrying these same pieces of paper because now that we're going into, yes, I know it's November 15th. Our producer told <laughs> us it's November 15th. Actually, that's helpful for me. <laughs> <laughs> I only knew because I knew yesterday was the 14th, so what do I know? Um, I gave up. After November 8th, I was like, it's yeah, winter. I'm just taking just time winter. off. Tell me when it's <laughs> turkey day. Um, so with the colder season coming up, because, you know, we're, everybody's busier in the warm season. There's a million things to do. We always talk about all the great walks you can take and whatnot in Manchester. And then I started the, a couple weeks ago thinking about um, different winter things, because winter can be a little more challenging. You know, people are kind of stuck indoors because it's a little colder and you know, I mean, it took me really, you know, as as our token African American, <laughs> and it took me some time to um, to adjust, you know, to the winter. For me, the worst is the the dark. Yeah. But if you actually embrace like winter sports, there's it, things. It's oh, actually there's definitely things. Snowshoeing, snowshoeing uh, by itself, ice fishing. I don't know if I want. I don't <laughs> fish in the warm weather, I'm, but I'm definitely not sitting on in a little cubby. I mean, I would but probably the, not the do snowshoe. that because I don't drink anymore. No, I, mean, I wouldn't and, see and, uh, the point. Like, I don't ski for a variety of reasons, um, but Dan does. So I'd like to see him go, even if he goes to McIntyre, which right. isn't, you know, major skiing by any means, but it's right there. You can do that on a whim. You know, be yep. like, hey, it's a good, nice sunny day. Why don't you go skiing? Actually, and I can go over and probably just, you know, have a the beer in the, and, yeah. I don't know how it works in the winter. I know they... They change McIntyre, so that bar isn't there in the wintertime. It's really weird. Really? Yeah, so when Victoria and I went to look at it last winter, because that's where Dan and I had our wedding reception, um, it was still set up as a ski lodge, yep. and that bar isn't there at all. So, it's so, so bizarre. So then when they change over to the summer season, yeah. they literally re... They bring this, it's just, it, you so have. So if to, you say it's set up like a ski lodge, what do you mean? It's just benches to put um, your boots on and walk Well, no, there's, there's or because like ski just, lodge to me is like fireplace, maybe like um, some drink. I don't think they have a fireplace, and, but they have long tables, you know, more like, oh, like tape, okay. folding table yep. chair type, you know, less restaurant y. Okay. But over, um, if you're looking at the bar, over behind it, which you don't even notice when you're there, when it is a restaurant, that opens up and there's like a snack bar. Oh, it's okay. really it's amazing how these two these two different seasonal businesses change in this one space. But anyway, so I could, I'm, I don't know. I assume they sell out. So alcohol. someone said to me because we've I've had it on my sort of to do list to. I too don't really ski. Mm, I tried one. I I'm not doing it. Again. I did learn in California, and we actually had like a cabin up in Tahoe yeah. with some friends for some years. Um, I learned to ski in a blizzard. And so, uh, and and so, like the guy kind of taught us, you know, like French fries is yeah. fast, pizza <laughs> is how you slow down. And then because it was snowing so hard, he was like, "Let's just go up and we'll try something." And so we skied down. It all went fine, and it was like a fun day. And then the next day, after the storm had cleared, and then we went we up, what, and we saw what, what we did, and you're like, I would down. never do that. And I was like, yeah, if I could have seen what was happening, I would yeah. not have done that. I, I, I did tell Dan I would try cross country skiing, maybe. Well, that's a that, we'll see about that. But um, but anyways, there's things like that. The snowshoeing though, like we have snowshoes, and I've been saying that to a lot of people. I'm involved in the. Uh, Friends of Piscataqua River Park, and we were talking about, you know, it's harder to do things in cleanups and whatnot in the winter. Right. Although um, we did get some good instruction about how we can um, tackle some of the bittersweet in the winter. I'll tell you about that later. Hmm. I was like, hmm. But I was like, you know what? Maybe a bunch of us could get out and go snowshoeing through the park in the winter so that we can appreciate, you know. Honestly, I still I still use the whole Piscataway yeah, River Park yeah. um, because I'm deeply grateful for Frank. Who the, says he can't shovel anymore. The trail. Um, Dan ran into him. He was raking, but he said he doesn't think he can shovel. Mm, That's going to be problematic. That is because um, awesome. Frank is in a, this amazing, just for folks who might not know, he's this amazing 
amazing volunteer. He used to live like maybe a mile from yeah. the trail. And then probably two, three years ago now, yeah. um, he he moved. Someone made an apartment available yep. to him that would be that is literally right next yep. to the trail. Yep. And we ended up actually like yep. six of us just helped yep. Frank move and we went day. down there. And um, and so it's just amazing. It's just this volunteer who keeps the trail He, he clear. shovels a path down the middle of the tr path. It and, seems like no matter what. And for so me, maybe it, I, I was just, you know, when, when I changed my diet and changed my health and really made exercise a integral part of your life will help with a lot of the kookaloony stuff, right? I mean, everyone knows. I was just laughing in this article. They're talking about how to get healthy and how people are getting therapists who take them outside yeah. to Maybe do just things. Go and I was like, oh, you mean so exercise? <laughs> like everyone always tells you. Maybe if you get a little exercise, you'll feel better. And um, and so I've always been really grateful right. to Frank because he made it available yes. to people to go walk your dog and all of that. So so anyways, on that note, so things to do in the winter. Um, and it started, everything always bubbles up. You, know, you read one thing and then you're like, oh, and what about this? So um, on December 3rd, which is only like probably three weeks, two and a half weeks from now, so it's creeped up really fast, um, is the uh, three things. Uh, Bedford Ambulatory Surgical Center, so Basque does the Santa Shuffle, which is always fun to watch because everybody's running in their little Santa suits. I, I, um, I have no idea what a Santa Shuffle is, but I will tell you what I'm picturing. <laughs> it is a like short marathon, I think. Oh, okay. And um, everyone wears a Santa. They, they all wear like tutus and Santa hats, oh, and stuff, so it's kind of fun to watch. Okay. It's very, it's very festive. Um, and then there is the holiday parade, and yes, I know that some people are annoyed that it's called the holiday parade and not the Christmas parade, and I can I appreciate that annoyance, but whatever, I just don't really have the energy to argue about whether Christmas is the only holiday. Um, as my, you know, I have a sibling who's Jewish; she celebrates Christmas and Hanukkah. Like there are, there's, there's yeah, I it's mean, okay. It's not meant. I don't. I don't always take things. I don't take things so personally when I when people say holidays, because there are a lot of holidays. There's Christmas, there's Hanukkah, um, there's, uh, I think there's a, I'm gonna, I'm not, there's Kwanzaa, so that's what I was gonna say. I think there's Kwanzaa in there. There might be a Muslim one in the, in the November range, I don't really know. There's New Year's, there's a lot of holidays. Anyways, that is also on the 23rd of December. And then in the afternoon, the Milliard Museum from 10 to 4 has free is open for free, which is kind of neat. That's on the 3rd? On the 3rd. Okay. From 10 to 4, uh, Milliard Museum. And um, honestly, if you haven't been to that, it's a it's neat fun. little museum. Yeah. So, I mean, if you're, if, if, especially if you've got kids or whatever, because there's the Sea Science Museum is right next door. Mm -hmm. But it is a really neat little place um, to, to wander around in the winter months when you need something to do. Right. Um, and that led me to think about what was going on at the Palace Theater because this is the season for that. Um, you can go to Palace Theater, and it's T H E A T R E. It's not. It's the English. It's the proper yeah, so spelling. Yes, Palace Theater. Theater. You can probably just Google <laughs> Palace Theater. It'll get you there, anyways. Um, I know um, they do the Nutcracker, which is always nice. They do the Christmas Carol. <laughs> Oh, that was bad. Um, they do Christmas Carol, which Dan and I, we didn't go last year, I don't think, because we went to see the Boston Pops instead, but we usually go to the Christmas Carol. It's different every year because it's different actors, and yep. so it always has a little different. And it's right in Manchester. And the Palace is a really, it's another one of those little gems that we have. Um, so anyways, if you go to palacetheater.org, you can find all sorts of events. Um, Dan and I, next Friday after Thanksgiving, are going to Trans-Siberian Orchestra. Oh my God, is it Thanksgiving yes. next week? Um, which is um, at Snoo Arena. I've been to that once before. To, what, to, to what, Trans Siberian sorry? Orchestra, which is oh, a rock. Oh, yeah. Um, Are they still to when is it? Oh, the Friday after the Thanksgiving. I, I think wonder. they're both on Friday. We're going on Friday afternoon, and I think there's also a Friday night. It's always the Friday after Thanksgiving in Manchester for some reason. So they keep, I think they keep the schedule the same year to year, which is kind of weird. Um, then that made me go over to the Courier because I was like, what are the other things? So the Courier, if you haven't been to the Courier Art Gallery, is also a nice little gem we have in Manchester. But in particular, the Winter Garden Cafe. Now, I know you've eaten there, and I've eaten there. Um, they have a really nice cafe mm. in the Courier, and you don't have to pay members. You don't have to pay entrance to the uh, music or the art gallery to go to the cafe. And they've got, like, all sorts of yummy foods. And I was noticing on here, so they have different things. Art after work. 
Experience free Thursday nights at the Courier, didn't know, from 5 to 8, featuring free gallery admission, exhibition tours, live music, and signature drinks. Nice. Who knew? Then they do, this is really what caught my eye, Sunday brunch. Mm. Every week starting at 10 a.m. on Sundays, obviously because it's called Sunday brunch. Um, they have special brunch menu um, and specialty cocktails, and there's always somewhere in my pile, is it second free Wednesday? Um do, do, are do. the brunches are now mu- uh, weekly? So, every week, I think. Because I've, I I used to go to those when they had like a jazz Sunday brunch. Yeah. But I recall that it was maybe uh, the maybe jazz one. Maybe are, the jazz is. This says join us every week, and then um, I know there is free somewhere. There is free. You get like second Saturday free if you live in New Hampshire. So like it's a good thing when it's cold or windy or snowy and you really just don't want to hear it. It's second Saturday free. Sponsor. And, and honestly, if you live in Manchester and you haven't been to the Courier, shame on you. Right. It is a, uh, it is really a nice I mean, museum. You know, I like going there and like writing or just sitting in the what, atrium. The, the cafe and, had really good food. They're like, it's not like you go some places, you know, and you get like, this, eh, it's really good food. I think it's the same uh, chef caterer owner as Restoration Cafe. Might be. So, because I, I recall seeing him from the Sunday brunch, right. jazz brunch once, and I recognized him, and then I saw him, at, and I was like, oh, and he was like, yeah, I actually cater well, at both of know, those. And Restoration Cafe's food's always also... I do feel like I spend a lot of time complaining about the city. Not that there's not a lot to <laughs> complain about, because there is, and it's a, our city's dirty, and it's filled with beggars and thieves and murderers murderers <laughs> and stabbers and, i mean some guy got rapers. stabbed in the head at, yes. at bridge cafe the other day you didn't read about that in the newspaper did you see anything about that in the newspaper no didn't see that in the newspaper just somebody got stabbed in the head at the bridge cafe yeah no big deal um then somebody got shot down near Yi dynasty on south willow street all right let's let, let's keep it this way because we were going with uh, there's positive. a lot to say that's good about right, the there city. is so um, but i mean so, so i do want to try to maybe we'll start the show with like look here's the good things and then we can glad <laughs> just go into all the segue crap. into the um hey we both lost the only <laughs> other thing that i've had on my list is a yard waste collection for those who aren't aware of it um, there is weekly yard waste collection on your trash pickup day. So you can put out your bags of leaves or if you've got the orange sticker and put it on a trash can and your yard waste, your, you know, the tree, all the debris that you want. Um, I checked, it is, I, I found it ironic that it doesn't clearly say on the website when it ends. <laughs> so I went and looked at, I download the calendar. Mine ends on December 2nd. So you only okay. have like this week. Maybe next week. You probably have two more weeks to get your stuff out to the curb and off your... Does it have to be in a specific kind of no, part of um, thing? No, most people usually buy either those paper ba- leaf bags from like Lowe's or Home yeah. Depot or Walmart, whatever. Um, I have orange stickers that you can get at the highway department for free. Okay. Um, you go to the highway department on Valley Street and there are these big bright orange stickers and you can put that on like a trash can. Hmm. And then put that out. I mean, so honest, the orange sticker just says, "This hey, is this is our waste. yeah." Okay. And to be honest, I just always make sure I put it away from my trash cans, and it's obvious that it's yard waste. And I've never not had them pick it up, whether the orange sticker was there or not. Um, but anyways, I wanted to say that, and then remember that when Christmas does come, there is. Um, the third week of January, they pick up the Christmas trees. Nothing worse than you see them rolling down the streets with tinsel on them. Sorry, I'm Anyways. laughing. It's one of my favorite things from my mom says, Christmas kum uak in Afrikaans. And it's like, when you want something and they yeah. won't give it to you, it's like, well, Christmas is still coming. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Christmas is um, on the so way. So there, that's all the happy, happy go lucky Manchester stuff I had today. What do you got? Anything? Uh, no, I do feel like we owe our viewers uh, a, a report on yeah. on on the elections. Um, I don't actually know what your spread was, but here's the news in Ward 11. Uh, Brittany and I did not prevail. I got about 200 votes less than Leapley, who was the second vote getter. We had four candidates, two seats. Um, I had a good conversation with Patty afterwards. I thought that was kind of nice. We set up a good uh, little lounge area for for the poll standing during the day. It was busy. I don't know if your poll was was like that. Well, it was interesting. So in the end of the day, when you look at the numbers, we did not have as many votes 
We did not um, have as many ballots cast as we did in the midterms in 2018. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, we were about 100 votes short. Hmm. But what was weird is that the timing was uh, different. So we were had a very, very busy poll in the morning. Very yeah, we busy. Had a, we had a, I had never seen, seen that. There was a line yeah. at the door yeah. when the polls opened at 6 a.m. And that's usually only during presidential years. Yeah. Like, so all morning it was busy, busy, yeah. busy, busy. But then when it got to be lunchtime, that that there's usually a pick. Yeah. Nope. They really quieted down, mm. and we were like, "Where are the lunch people?" And it, it's just, it was different. It was like people were the voting energy at different was times. a different. Yeah, um, and that could have been just people being like really mindful. Oh, I need to vote because of their voting plan. So I kind of <laughs> feel bad because I feel like I haven't really digested a whole lot of it. Um, maybe next week I'll have more digested information. But in my ward, in Ward Ten, Dan and I also did not prevail. Um. And then it's always like a day or two later, Dan will ask me a question like, wait, what was that? So both Dan and I got more votes than we've gotten in the past in midterms. You can't really count presidential elections because you have so many more voters. So that makes that always makes you feel like, well, I didn't lose votes. Right. And our percentages of the number of people who voted increased, yep. which that's harder to do, I find, mm -hmm. because I noticed like Heidi's number stays stagnant. Mm. She just gets the same percentage of no matter how many people come out. So that's kind of interesting to me. Like, okay, so we picked up votes. I uh, I was about 124, I think, or 125 by the official numbers because the numbers we get on election night are not exactly the same as the numbers um, when they hit the Secretary of State. <laughs> but when I was looking, I wish I had brought my ballot because it was a little easier. Oh, um, um. What I found was interesting so they read, they read the numbers, you know, this many for governor, this many for, you know, uh, senator and so on and so forth. Um, nothing's, you know, as soon as they read Sununu's numbers, Sununu beat Tom Sherman in my ward 1222 to 7, no, 1707 to 1222. And I thought, hmm, 1222, the Democrat got 1222. That's probably not good, right? So then they keep going. I, that number is not going to match up with any other numbers. And then they read the rest of them. Um, I did notice that you and I both did get more votes than Don Bolduck in our wards. So there's that. Um, I don't know what that means, but there's that. Um, and they go through all of them. What threw me is at the end when they got to the questions, because it caught me by surprise. Because um, trust me, I, when they're reading the numbers, I'm listening. I'm never just like listening to them. I'm writing them down because I right. take them, but I'm also always like, like, like well, that's well, odd. This or this is to peculiar. This, or why so this, they get down or... to the questions. So this is my opinion on the questions. And people... so for the two people who didn't vote, the ballot <laughs> had two constitutional or two ballot questions yep. on the thing. One thing I actually found very interesting is typically, and maybe it's just when we work on constitutional amendments or ballot questions. I feel like in the past, I have always known what the questions exactly. are and kind of how to answer them. And this time, honestly, like an hour before, like people yeah. are coming to me and they're like, oh, which way are you voting? Yeah. Yes, no, what? And, so, I was and just that's like, exactly oh. what I, my takeaway was that um, most people had no idea what question one was and question two, nobody really knew what to do about that. Um, and that my opinion was, people aren't going to vote for something they don't understand. That, oh. No, I'm just saying, if somebody asks you if you would like this strange food that you don't know what it is, you're not like, yes, I must. I mean, maybe you would be, but you know what I mean? I would. You, but. you hesitate, and you go, no, I'm all set, thanks, right? So when people were asking me, should I vote yes or no, I said, well, I can't imagine it's going to pass because people don't know what the question is. Right. Even I know what the question's supposed to be, and it doesn't make sense And, and the probate question was, like, this long, and, and you just still, know most people right. aren't going to read it, and it wasn't clear that they were really just trying to fix a technical problem. So when, problem. when they read the results of the questions, I expected them both to be no predominantly no, yep. like overwhelmingly no, okay. or drop off. Or, yeah, like I thought there would be a steep drop off. In Ward 10, 1,450 people voted yes on question one and 895 voted no. Then mm -hmm. on question two, 1,499 people voted no and 876 voted yes. And I went, what is going on here? So then I immediately went up my ballot and I actually asked the Democrats, I said, did you guys make recommendations? on your literature about the questions and they said yes democrats democrats said vote yes on one and no on two which is exactly what happened so i looked up the ballot just hear me out for a second mm -hmm. 1499 1450 1447 1433 um 1436 
1425, 1471, 1414. Mm, are you saying Democrats are rule followers who I, consistently I, I vote down the ballot? I literally looked at this and said, I can guarantee that there are 1,425, give or take, Democrat voters in my ward that I am fairly confident, and I say this in jest, but I'm trying to make a point, that if they inserted Hitler's name on the ballot, <laughs> they would have also voted for it. And what was interesting, and I can't really see it here because I'm looking at Secretary of State numbers, when you got down to the county races where there was libertarians yeah. running as Democrats, they also got the 1,400 I votes. I saw that. So these, the, the Democrats whose head explodes over libertarians, right, voted for the libertarian candidates because they were clever enough to get in that column, which made me think, it, it was kind of actually disturbing because I was like, so these 1,420 voters in my ward don't care who's in the column. They, and they just follow along, rate right straight all the way through the questions, which... I don't know. Yeah, but, uh, but it's a catch-22 because on the one hand, I mean, I agree with you, right? Like, I would like, because I believe in individualism, I would like people to, think. I would like people to actually choose their candidates and be yep. like, oh, I want this person and that person. And, you know, and, and I mean, it does seem like a little bit of that happened between the, the congressional races and the local races. But, you know, on the flip side, we also, I've heard you say it, I've certainly said it, we have said, vote down no, the ticket. My, my point so. was, not point that they do it, my point was that the Democrats follow along so much. Because I think we also... I think that's the nature of, of the being, party. I, well, that's what I was getting at, is oh. that, like, you look at Democrats versus Republicans in general. And I've said this for years. The Democrats follow lockstep. They would like they would like people to believe that we're the ones that follow Donald Trump lockstep or whatever, right? There, that's what their message is. Goosestep, right? But when you look at some election results, you can see that they mm. they literally and I don't I'm not even convinced I know how the Democrats can drill that into their heads so well that they did it so well. So I think it's it's uh, it's a lot of things. It is much like we talked about two weeks ago where we said, oh, there's this new thing, the, the voting plan. Right. So I think in general, Democrats are much better at um Cognitive behavioral therapy and sort mm. of cognitive, you know, like gaming the system. An interesting thing I saw is, and I do think this is a, a distinction worth thinking about, is it was a tweet that went by and it said that Republicans um, try to get votes and Democrats try to get ballots. And That's those are two different that, things. That would make sense because they're just, they don't care. Right, they're not trying to convince you, you that, you should, just that like, you're the okay, better person. Here's, here's a block. Here's, uh, you know, here are the absentee ballots. Let's go in. Here's a college. Let's yes. Right. So if you're like driven to be like, it's 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 a different thing mm. because you are actually creating an immediacy and closing the deal, yes. right, with a ballot, yes. as opposed to, hey, I really hope, like, you know, I can earn your vote on November 8th. Right. Uh, We're trying to, I'm trying to build relationships with all, you know, 1,400 votes that I need. With, with a and person, I, right? right? It's person to person, but I think person to, or, or Democrat to ballot is... There's a the different system, right? Yes. It's the machine. It's the, the the whole thing. And if you look at the amount of money that was spent, oh. you know, I'm at it, the stage where you don't even see it anymore. I actually thought maybe I would tweet this out at some journalists, real journalists, and be like, D has anyone seen the final count? You know, these are the kinds of things we well, would see where people would go, this election, we spent seven six, trillion dollars right. or whatever it is. I haven't even seen. I'm any not of sure that. if it's. It might be too soon, or we, I don't. I don't, I don't feel like it get, happens. I don't anymore. feel like we get news. I don't feel no, like we, we don't. Get, so like it doesn't surprise me that they're not talking about it. Um, I don't want to get into a pigeonhole or anything, but anybody Google is it FTX? Yes. The big, <laughs> Google FTX Democrat Party. Just Google that. FTX is a clearinghouse for cryptocurrency that went bankrupt in the last two weeks. That oh look, they've been getting um, tons of transactions from the Ukraine 
Um, the co- kid who runs was running this company, whose is- name is Bankman Fried, Freed, maybe something like that. But 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 I was like, uh, I mean, well, I actually I made a meme where I was like, you know, the is one with friend? the lizard people where they're like laughing mm-hmm. at the you know the backstories and and I was and 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 the tagline was. Um, and then let's call him Bankman. Man, right. So <laughs> this guy I wow. read is the second largest contributor oh, he to the Democrat Party behind George Soros. Thirty million dollars behind George Soros. Just for George this cycle, Soros. Um, had plans to pump tons of money into the twenty twenty four election. Oh, he was projecting election. one billion dollars in twenty twenty four. His mom, yes, runs a pack that benefits Democratic candidates, mm-hmm. but the, it. The Ukraine piece was the part that made mm-hmm. my spiny sense. There are tons, the Biden administration gives tons of money to the Ukraine. There are tons of transactions that going. That number is now up to, I think I read $118 billion. Dollars. There are tons of transactions from the Ukraine into through this clearinghouse mm-hmm. that is a huge donor to the Democrat party whose mother is like one of the largest, pat, runs one of the largest Democrat PACs. So, it, it, it's, it, it's it's very shady. It's, yeah, there's something not right it's, there. So, anyways, that's my, that when you're talking about like, mm, oh no, it's money. There's a lot of money, and trust me, the big money is not on the Republican side. So here's Never my is. point. No, and and but also back to like the magic sauce of how people are directed to believe certain things. Now, of course, I would say Abortion. that the main mainstream media, <laughs> you know, trends left. Although that's changing with the decentralization of how information is is sort of garnered and gathered and spread but i just want to know what that number is Mm. because i want to go look i mean to me it just seems absurd at this stage we could probably take whatever elections cost and just start writing people a direct check would be better like i just well the the money it's not like the money goes into a hole though the money is spent and then it goes to come different printers and consultants and all that stuff and then those people have their employees and they all have their own st- so i mean it is it's not like we're sending the money yeah, to yeah, germany but, i mean on, no understood but i mean even so so we now have a 100 percent permanent election economy yeah there is a slice of um it, yes. i mean you know and and we only have two minutes yeah. left but um you know it's just the the u.s's gdp is based purely on consumption so yes. our GDP does not measure anything that's gross domestic product, something that, that right. we've made something. It actually just measures how we are spending yes. money. And we're, I think, spending way too much money on elections. So we're going to run out of time, and I, I just thought this is a little food for thought thing. Uh, whether or not you like Betsy DeVos or not is irrelevant. Uh, the, the NEA, which is the te- National Teachers Union, tweeted on the 12th, Educators love their students and know better than anyone what they need to learn and to thrive. To which Betsy DeVos re- replied, you misspelled you parents. parents. Yeah, let that sink in. <laughs> Anyways, that's all we've got. Stay warm, get out there and um, enjoy the outdoors. And we will be back next week. Um, we might be switching up the day that we're taping soon, um, but we'll we'll definitely be back. And check out my book, The Ecstatic pessimist uh, stories of hope that was just because i knew he could zoom in <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah have a wonderful you, week and, and um if we don't see you have a great thanksgiving take care yeah, bye bye